Find the basic initial feasible solution to the following transportation problem using the least cost method. So an organization has four factories F1, F2, F3 and F4 and they have a capacity of 5, 8, 7 and 14 units per day respectively. And the same organization has three distribution centers D1, D2 and D3 and they have a demand of 7, 9 and 18 units per day. Now each of the factories can transport the material to any of the distribution centers and the unit cost of transporting from each factory to each distribution center has been given to us which is represented in this black color. For example for shipping one unit of material from F1 to D1 the cost is 2 rupees. Similarly for shipping one unit from F1 to D2 the cost is 7 rupees and so on. Now we are being asked to find out the basic initial feasible solution for this situation so that we can transport material from these factories to these distribution centers thereby meeting all the supply and demand constraints. So let's understand this example in more detail. So let me draw a map to understand this situation. Now there are four factories which are at different corners of the country. So let's say this is F1 and F1 has a supply capacity of 5 units per day. So supply capacity is 5 per day. Now F2 is situated here. And F2 has a supply capacity of 8 units per day. F3 is here. And has a supply capacity of 7 units per day. And F4 is here. having a supply capacity of 14 units per day. And there are three distribution centers D1, D2 and D3. So let's say the first distribution center is here. This is D1. Second one is somewhere here. This is D2. And third one is here. Just D. Now D1 has a demand of 7 units per day. So demand is 7 per day. D2 has a demand of 9 units per day. So demand is 9 per day. And D3 has a demand of 18 units per day. So demand is 18 units per day. Now each of the factories can transport the material to any of the warehouses. So F1 can transport the material to D1, F1 can transport the material to D2 and F1 can also transport the material to D3. In case of F1 transporting material to D1, the cost per unit is 2 rupees. So this is 2 rupees per unit. For F1 to D2, the cost is 7 rupees per unit. So 7 rupees per unit. And from F1 to D3, the cost is 4 rupees per unit. So this is 4 rupees per unit.
Similarly, F2 can transport the material to D1, D2 or D3. So F2 to D1, F2 to D2 and F2 to D3. Now the cost per unit for transporting material from F2 to D1 is 3 rupees. So this is 3 rupees per unit. For F2 to D2, the cost is 3 rupees again. So this is also 3 rupees per unit. And for F2 to D3, the cost is 1 rupee per unit. So this is 1 rupee per unit. Similarly for F3, F3 can transport the material to D1, D2 or D3. So for F3 to D1, the unit cost is 5 rupees. So this is 5 rupees per unit. For F3 to D2, the unit cost is 4 rupees. So this is 4 rupees per unit. And for F3 to D3, the unit cost is 7 rupees. So this is 7 rupees per unit. Now again the same thing for F4. So F4 to D1, F4 to D2, and F4 to D3. So F4 to D1 is 1 rupee per unit. So 1 rupee per unit. F4 to D2 is 6 rupees per unit. So this is 6 rupees per unit. And F4 to D3 is 2 rupees per unit. So this is 2 rupees per unit. Now we have to find out the basic initial feasible solution for transporting the material from these factories to the distribution centers so that all the supply and demand constraints are met. And in this video, we'll use the least cost method to arrive at that basic initial feasible solution. Now the first step in solving the transportation model is to formulate the transportation table. So step one is to formulate the transportation table. So in this example we have already been given the transportation table which is what I have drawn here. Now a check needs to be done to find out if the total supply and demand are equal. If yes then the problem is said to be balanced and if not a dummy origin or destination is added to balance the supply and demand. So let's quickly add up the supply and demand. So for supply, 14 plus 7 is 21, 21 plus 8 is 29, and 29 plus 5 is 34. And the demand, so 18 plus 9 is 27, 27 plus 7 is 34. So both supply and demand is equal to 34. So in this case the transportation table is balanced and we can proceed with step number two. So step number two is to establish the basic initial feasible solution. And in this case, we have been asked to find the basic initial feasible solution using the least cost method.
Now the first step in the least cost method is to evaluate the transportation cost and select the square with the lowest cost. And in case of a tie, make an arbitrary selection. So in our case, we have two squares with cost of one rupee per unit. So there is a tie and we can select any one arbitrarily. So let's select this one that is F2 D3. Now the next step says that depending upon the supply and demand condition, allocate the maximum possible units to the square having the lowest cost. So this square has the lowest cost. So we'll try to allocate as much as possible to this square first. Now F2 has a supply capacity of 8 units, but D3 has a demand of 18 units. So even though D3 has a demand of 18 units, we can't supply more than 8 units to D3 from F2. So let's allocate 8 units here. So with this allocation, the available supply at F2 is now 0 and the demand at D3 is now 18 minus 8 which is 10. Now the next step is to delete the row or column or both satisfied by the allocation. So in this case F2 has completely exhausted its supply capability so it cannot supply to any other distribution center now. So we can mark a cross in these squares. In case of D3, the demand is still unsatisfied so we can't mark across in the remaining squares. Now we have to repeat these steps till all the supply and demand conditions are satisfied. So let's now again find out the square with the least cost. So the next one is F4D1. So we'll select this one. Now next we have to evaluate the supply and demand condition for this square. So F4 has a supply capacity of 14 units whereas the demand at D1 is 7 units. So even though F4 can supply more, the demand is only for 7 units. So we'll allocate 7 units here. Now with this allocation the demand reduces by 7 units and therefore becomes 0. And the supply also reduces by 7 units. So 14 minus 7. So this becomes 7 units. Now since the demand for D1 has now been completely satisfied, we don't need to supply anything more from any other factory to D1. So let's put a cross in the remaining boxes here. Now let's again evaluate the cost and find the box with the least cost. So the next box is this one F4 D3. So let's choose this one now. Now we'll evaluate the supply and demand condition for this box. So F4 can supply 7 units while the demand at D3 is 10 units. So even though the demand is for 10 units, F4 can only supply 7 units. So we'll allocate 7 units to this box. Now with this allocation, the demand reduces to 3 that is 10 minus 7 and the supply becomes 0 that is 7 minus 7. Now the supply at F4 has been completely exhausted so F4 cannot supply to any other distribution center so let's put a cross in this box indicating that this is no longer available for allocation. Now let's again evaluate the square with the least cost so for the next one we have a tie between F1 D3 and F3 D2. So let's select F1 D3. Now let's evaluate the supply and demand condition for F1 D3. So for F1 D3 the supply capacity for F1 is 5 while the demand for D3 is 3. So we'll allocate 3 units here. So with this allocation the supply capacity at F1 reduces by 3 
so the remaining supply capacity is two units and the demand also reduces by three so the remaining demand is now zero units now since the demand at d3 has been completely satisfied we don't need to allocate any further units to d3 so we'll cross off the remaining boxes for d3 indicating that it is not available for any allocation now let's again evaluate the square with the least cost so out of the remaining squares f3 d2 has the least cost so we'll select this one now let's evaluate the supply and demand condition for this box so f3 can supply seven units while d2 has a demand of nine units so we'll allocate seven units here because even though the demand is nine we can only supply seven so now with this allocation the supply capacity at f3 becomes zero while the demand reduces by seven so the remaining demand is two units now since the supply capacity at f3 has been completely exhausted we'll cross off the remaining boxes but all other boxes are already crossed off so we are fine there so let's now proceed to find the square with the least cost so now we have only one box remaining which is f1 d2 so for f1 d2 let's evaluate the supply and demand condition so for f1 the remaining supply is two units while the demand is two units so we can easily allocate two units here so with this allocation the supply available at f1 becomes zero and the demand also becomes zero and all other boxes for f1 and d2 are either allocated or crossed off so now with this allocation all the supply and demand has been allocated so this becomes our basic initial feasible solution now let's evaluate the total cost obtained by this solution so we have shipments from and to then we have units shipped then cost per unit in rupees and the total cost again in rupees So first allocation is from F1 to D2. So from F1 to D2. The unit shipped is the allocation that we have made, which is two units. And the cost per unit is seven. So the total cost is seven multiplied by two, which is 14. Now the second allocation is f1 to d3 so f1 to d3 the number of units shipped is 3 while the cost per unit is 4 so unit shipped is 3 cost is 4 3 fours are 12 the next allocation is f2 d3 so F2 D3 unit shipped is 8 and cost per unit is 1 so unit shipped is 8 and cost per unit is 1 so the total cost is 8 ones are 8 the next allocation is F3 D2 so F3 D2 the number of units shipped is 7 and the cost is 4 so 7 and 4 
so the total cost is 7 fours are 28 now the next allocation is f4 d1 so f4 d1 and the unit shipped is 7 while the cost per unit is 1 so 7 and 1 and total cost becomes 7 multiplied by 1 which is 7 and the last allocation is f4 d3 so f4 d3 the number of units shipped is 7 while the cost per unit is 2 so 7 twos are 14 so now let's find out the total cost so 4 plus 2 6 plus 8 14 plus 8 22 plus 7 29 plus 4 33 3 carry over 3 plus 1 4 plus 1 5 plus 2 7 plus 1 8 so 83 rupees is the total transportation cost based on this initial feasible solution obtained using the least cost method